So I'm recording this straight after the last video because I'm kind of in this mindset at the minute and I feel like I'm not going to make a video tomorrow because probably won't be. But I, this felt wrong touching on my Project for Awesome video. I did, I, I had this plan of using my uni work. I know, right? Using uni work towards my Project for Awesome. Do you know what? It felt wrong. It felt like a bit of self-exposure in a charity video, which isn't really what I want to do for a Project for Awesome. But um, basically, if you do watch the Project for Awesome video, it was a general gist of um, supporting Alzheimer's Society this year, like I ever do every year, because they really helped me in the time, my family in the time when my gran had, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And I've talked about this quite a few times because I've kind of had a bit of and it's been a bit of therapy to be fair. But I think one thing I've never really touched on, on YouTube at least, is how much that experience has affected me as a person. And um, I'm not saying it's character building because I think that's definitely the wrong terminology. It's, it tore me to shreds and put me back together, I think, um, to put a very blunt note on it. Uh, to put this in sort of a timeline context, I moved away to uni in September 2012. My grand died in October 2012. So the last time I saw my grand, I've talked about this before, she was, it was probably the, pen, the, the worst she could have gotten in my eye. What happened was she was on, a f on the floor because she couldn't get in and out of bed lying on the mattress being fed by fed by a machine and watered by a machine and all, all of the bodily functions taken over by a machine and it was probably the single most painful thing to ever walk and walk to and see like to see someone who you always remember to be very joyful and playful and happy and you know a bit loopy because that was my loopy grind there and then that's the last time you see it to see her a shell basically of herself came back and but she got sicker and iller and from other things not just Alzheimer's there are multiple other things going on um, in terms of her actual physical health not just her mental health because she wasn't eating because she thought she'd eaten it five minutes ago when it had been a day or so ago a funeral, she used to have this dance and flower pot, which I think I've mentioned once or twice, and um, basically we played that right end of the funeral and it was kind of a bit of a laugh, because, I say a bit of a laugh, it was a laugh because that's kind of what we remember her by because she was obsessed with this little flower pot for some reason, it wish she would dance to Glenn Miller. I don't know, a bit weird, it sounds a bit weird saying, but she loved it and you'd, I probably heard it a few thousand times when I was over at her house before she was diagnosed and even after it was still something that brought sort of a bit of a trouble to her and I think that's became, that was what she became well known for. My grand's passing, um, it took me a long time to sort of really register what happened. I think and you have a massive tragedy in the family, which this was, this is sort of my first proper dealing with death I guess and to, in a family setting at least it really sort of took a while for me to eternally realize what happened and I spent a lot of nights not really knowing what to think about it in some ways I think she if she just had an accident and she just slipped and fallen downstairs or something like that it wouldn't have been easier but I think it would have been a lot of a different experience of grief because I my grief was prolonged and I think it was grieving more for her than for me personally. I was grieving for what she was going through because she was so she was losing herself and there was nothing no one could do anything about it. We just had to sit there and wait for it to end. Anyway, when I got into sort of my final year of uni, I finally decided, right, I've got a year left of uni, I can make any work I want, what do I want to do about it? And this is how Slip of the Mind came about. So Slip of the Mind was my first semester's work, which I think I've shown on here before, like clips anyway. But um, basically it was the idea of this table, which we usually have um, memories and stuff laid out, like a mantelpiece. It was originally going to be that, and it was going to be like these things phasing in and out to show how Alzheimer's slowly reduces down what to what this person remembers and this you know this massive wealth of memory slowly whittles down to like one tiny little thing and even that disappears in the end and then it just phases out into just complete white expanse to emptiness again because unfortunately Alzheimer's is something that doesn't stop it doesn't just stop one day it it's 
forever rolled in, forever, 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 go, forever going on, and it's relentless like that until there's nothing else left to destroy, basically. And I base, I, sh I always remember my credit for that because I showed it to my lecturers, and there was stunned silence. I don't think I've ever had that. But stunned silence in the matter in which they were like, we've got no questions. It was really, I think a few of them were holding back tears and stuff. And I've showed it to a few people on that burst them into tears and stuff. And I think when you make work like that, you kind of realize how universal this horrible thing is. You really realize that you're not alone, that everyone had, that most people know someone who's gone through Alzheimer's or dementia in some form.